more than 400 million years, sharks have inhabited the sea. They have evolved to be efficient predators and are true survivors who thrive while the dinosaurs perished to the point of extinction. Sharks have been encountered by man for thousands of years. We have seen vast differences among these cartilaginous creatures. Many have taken on bodily forms that best suit their surrounding environment. Blue sharks are perhaps the most commonly seen shark. They can be found throughout most of the world's oceans. With a pointed snout and a sleek body, a blue shark may be described as the typical shark. Angel sharks have flattened bodies that allow them to hide in the sand and ambush unsuspecting prey. These leopard sharks can be found congregating in the shallows of Big Fisherman's Cove at Catalina Island. At times there may be as many as 40 animals lazing about in the warm sunlight. It is not known why they congregate during late summer and autumn. It is thought that they may be females incubating embryos in the womb. Reproduction in sharks can occur in three ways. Some sharks, like the blue shark, bear their young live as in humans, while others have embryos that develop in the mother without an umbilical. Horn sharks develop in and hatch from a leathery egg case. The horn shark family dates back more than 200 million years, classifying these animals as living fossils. Swell sharks also lay eggs, but of an entirely different nature. The mother swell shark deposits the egg case and secures it to an object. In seven to nine months, a miniature version of the adult breaks free from the egg. In the past two centuries, scientists have obtained extensive knowledge of sharks, but there is still plenty that we can learn about these mysterious creatures. One particular species of shark reminds us of how little we really know. Meet the rare and elusive Megamouth Shark. It's truly unbelievable that this 16-foot-long shark could remain undetected until the 20th century. It wasn't until 1976 that this bizarre looking fish was entangled in a Navy sea anchor and then brought to the public's attention. Prior to the first encounter, paleontologists were puzzled by fossil shark teeth found in Kern County, California. These teeth had no living relatives until the discovery of Megamouth. To date, only six males have been found. The latest animal was the only one ever studied captured on film, alive and in the wild. On October 21st, 1990, Megamouth number no. 6 was caught by commercial fisherman Otto Elliott. The shark became entangled in his drift net. Otto immediately realized that the shark was unique. What was most amazing was that Megamouth No. 6 was towed alongside Otto's boat back to the small Southern California port of Dana Point. The spectacular survival of Megamouth set him apart from many other shark species. Otto tried to find an aquarium well suited for this animal, but none wanted to take on the responsibility. He then called the marine biologist from the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History. Dr. Robert Lavenberg grasped the opportunity of being able to observe a captive living Megamouth shark. He assembled a team of filmmakers and scientists to gather, for the first time, data that may unlock the mystery behind these elusive creatures. The news of a live Megamouth being held at Dana Point caused quite a commotion. It's called the Megamouth, possibly the rarest shark on Earth. At Dana Point today, scientists got their first look at a live specimen. More from our own Bob Navarro. 36 hours after it got tangled in a fishing net, one of the world's rarest and most mysterious sea creatures was free again. It's called Megamouth, a shark 20 feet long, 1,200 pounds, and never taken alive before. Early Sunday morning, Otto Elliott, the skipper of the Moonshiner, began dragging in his nets. It's a, it's a uh, swordfish drift net, swordfish and shark, a net that we catch. Uh, and he just, we pulled it uh, Saturday night and he was in there. Elliot and his crew slowly dragged the shark back into the harbor. 
been called biologist. A few hours later, divers got their first look at Megamouth. Huge, rubbery, um, not like any shark that you've ever seen. The skin feels the same because they have these dermal denticles, little um, like teeth all over the skin. And the roughness of the skin is there. The fins are all right, but the mouth is all wrong. You know, you think of a typical shark kind of cornical with big teeth. This has a big, huge mouth with just rubbery lips. Mega mouth number six was taken outside the harbor to be studied and filmed. 16 feet long and weighing 1,700 pounds, he appeared more like a whale than a shark. His large eye suggested that he may spend most of his time in total darkness. Perhaps that is why so few have been encountered. His huge mouth set directly in front of the head is typical of plankton eating sharks. We know from studying Megamouth number two that these sharks eat small, tiny red shrimp that live in coastal waters. These crustaceans migrate up and down in the water in large aggregations. Dr. Lavenberg suggested in a 1984 publication that megamouths probably follow the shrimp and migrate in the same manner. Hopefully the tracking transmitters will help prove this theory. There is also the hope that megamouth number six will lead us to other megamouths, maybe even a never before seen female. Megamouth number six had been in captivity for many hours. He became stressed and appeared to be dying. Person after person swam near the shark, hoping to get a glimpse of this animal oddity. The tracking devices had not yet arrived. It was thought that the shark may have to be released for fitting the track. But before all was given up, Otto and Dr. Lavenberg gave a last attempt to revive the animal by moving him to much deeper, cooler water. The shark responded quickly to the new, stimulating, oxygen-rich water. All hope of the shark's survival had been restored. With the well-being of the shark now certain, it was time to set him free. Tracking devices were implanted in his skin just below the dorsal fin. Then, receivers aboard a tracking vessel were adjusted to the proper frequencies. Finally, after more than 40 hours of captivity, Megamouth number six was untied and set free. After his release, he immediately swam into deep water, acting as if nothing had occurred. And it's healthy, it's looking good. We have two transmitters. Things couldn't be better for this animal. I'm sure he's ready to go. Man, got a look at this, this incredible sea creature and a short look and now it's gone. We got an incredible look at this creature, and now it's tagged, and we're still getting a look. Uh, we're getting a look at it as it's swimming along off the coast of the state, off the coast of California. Scientists say the tracking device could last as long as six months. Bob Navarro, Channel 9 News at Dana Point. What we learn from this animal is truly amazing. This shark has behavior vastly different from other sharks. His migration pattern did indeed resemble that of the red shrimp that were found in the stomach of Megamouth number two. Megamouths are the only sharks known to migrate at dusk and dawn on a daily basis. Blue sharks may make numerous dives to various depths throughout the day and night in no distinct pattern. Megamouths swim very slowly. They are more buoyant than other sharks and they lack the need to swim steadily to keep from sinking. Megamouth number six gave us the opportunity to unravel the mystery of these astounding sharks. But unfortunately, the encounter with Megamouth number six only whet our appetites, tantalizing us to want to know even more, more than we may ever get a chance to know.